In this video lecture, we're going to look at the basics of writing programs in the Python programming language. While we're going to be learning Python, the real goal of these uh, video lectures is not to teach you Python, but instead to teach you some of the foundational aspects uh, that apply to writing programs in almost any language. So we're going to look at Python, but the one point I want to make is that you kind of step back and look at the whole process uh, as a whole and not necessarily uh, as it applies directly to Python because there's a lot here that's shared amongst other languages. A couple things that are of note with Python. Python uh, is going to give us two different ways to explore and write programs. The first is going to be through the use of the REPL which stands for read, eval, and print loop. And essentially I want you to think of the REPL as a playground at this point uh, that we're going to use to explore Python syntax. You'll note that the free online textbook that we're using to go with this video lecture uh, asks that you uh, type a lot of things into the REPL so you can see results. So it's a really cool way to just play around with the language. If you have questions about you know, how to write a specific uh, arithmetic expression or you're not sure about whether a, a variable name is valid or something like that, the REPL is going to be a really good place to get an answer to that question because you'll see really quickly uh, if you get an error or not. So um, one thing to note is that the REPL will not be used for us to write and submit assignments. Uh, this is just going to be something for you to play with. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, that's the basics of using the REPL. So let's see how we can invoke this. Um, to get the REPL up and running, what we want to do is uh, directly launch the Python executable. So I'm going to show you how to do this on two different operating systems. First up, let's look at how to launch this on Mac OS 10. First thing you need to do is navigate to your Applications folder. And inside of your Applications folder, there is a folder called Utilities. Uh, if you click on that and scroll all the way down to the bottom, what you will note is there is an app called Terminal App. And if you've never used it, this is what gives us a traditional uh, Unix command line terminal. And so you'll note that there's going to be a um, blinking prompt here. You'll see there's some information about my system on the left hand side. And if you're running a Mac, this is really easy because Python comes pre-installed. So to enter into the REPL, all you need to do on a Macintosh is launch the terminal and type the command Python. And if you hit enter, what you'll note is you are now in the REPL for version 2.7.10 of uh, Python. And you can immediately go in and type some commands. So you can type in mathematical operations and see immediate results. Um, and it gives you the opportunity just to explore the language. So this is how we launch the REPL in Mac. Let's take a look at how we launch the REPL in Windows. On Windows, at this point, you should have already gone to python.org and downloaded the uh, Python packages. So if we navigate to our Start menu, and you'll note that mine are recently added, but if you scroll down, to the letter P in your start menu, assuming you're running Windows 10. You'll find a Python group. In this case, I'm running Python 3.6 on my Windows version. And what you're going to want to do is launch either idle or Python 3.6. So if you want to launch the Python executable directly, you would launch Python 3.6. And what you'll note is you get a traditional terminal, just like we did in the Macintosh um, operating system. But now on Windows, we kind of get that classic looking DOS prompt. Uh, and I can go ahead and I can type commands in. And I'm actually in Python 3.6, so I gotta make some adjustments here. Um, and you'll note that it works just as is. You'll note that there was another item in there called idle. Idle is um, a development environment for writing Python, so it's really up to you if you wanna launch that instead. It has some other options. It does let you save things uh, to disk. Uh, and a few other items that, that make it way more robust than just launching, launching, launching the REPL uh, directly. And you'll note that there's a bunch of other options that, that, are, that may be more helpful to you in writing programs. Uh, but at the end of the day, we want to use these uh, REPL environments just for playing around with the language. And so if you're on Windows, whether you choose idle or you just use the direct Python executable, uh, it will be sufficient for you to follow along with the reading and get that work done. Now let's take a look at a way we can write programs so that they can be submitted for assignments uh, so that we can have files and save them and come back and edit them later and give us a more robust development environment um, and something that's a lot more permanent than the uh, playground environment provided by the REPL. 
In this class, we're going to write Python programs using an integrated development environment. This is a little bit different than how most people probably write Python. A lot of people will probably just use a, a standard text editor uh, to write their Python. Uh, but in this class, we want to use an integrated development environment because we want to make sure that we're getting introduced to the same tools uh, that you might use if you continue to take future programming classes. And so specifically, we'll use the JGrasp environment, which is used for writing Java applications at the college uh, and also can be utilized uh, to write Python. So it's kind of nice that it lets us get familiar with this tool set. Um, and essentially, what is an integrated development environment? It is a tool that puts all of the tools necessary to write an application in one place. And we have this application, and in this one application, what we're going to see is we're going to have all of the ability to write uh, programs. In other words, write our programs, our Python programs, into uh, a text file, uh, edit those at a later date, um, you know, manage projects that, that get too big if we, if we want to. Uh, we won't see that in this class, but, but the capabilities are there. Uh, we'll be able to run our programs directly in the IDE without having to go to the command line to invoke anything. Uh, we'll be able to debug our programs using the IDE uh, and easily see our programming output all in one place. So let's take a look at the IDE that we're going to use in this class called JGrasp and quickly look at how we can write a small, simple program. I'm going to show this sample on the Mac, uh, but it works exactly the same on Windows. So the program you're looking at now is JGrasp. It's a free integrated development environment used uh, by a lot of colleges for teaching programming. It's not as robust as a professional IDE might be. Uh, chances are you probably won't want to use JGrasp much beyond taking classes. Uh, and in fact, maybe even by your second or third semester, you're going to want to start looking at some more robust IDEs. But for now, it's a really great tool for learning. And it really does present the concepts of an integrated development environment in a really nice, simple, easy to understand manner. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at the interface. Uh, we've got all of our standard uh, menu bar items up at the top and some that may be new to you. So we'll explore what some of those mean. So first thing we're going to do is go up to File and create a new file, just like you would in any other programming language. You'll note that Java is the default language uh, for this environment. Uh, but if you go to Other, you can scroll down and you can see a couple other language options. But note one of them is Python. So I'm going to choose Python from the programming list and this will create a new file. And you'll note that immediately this file is unnamed because I haven't saved it yet. So what I'm going to do is go in and I'm going to print hello world. And I'm going to do it in the Python 2 way of writing uh, a print statement. And you'll note that this line number appeared. I can turn that off. Notice that my integrated development environment allows me to put invisible lines to the left hand side of my programming code to make it a little bit easier to spot errors or problems. And I'll put another print statement in here so that we can see it. And one of the cool things that you can do, so now you'll note I have two lines, so these numbers are there and they can be shown and hidden. I'll usually leave them on, but I want to kind of toggle it a lot now so you can note that these are not required by the language. And immediately what you'll note to the right of that number uh, toggle button is this little run, running person. And if you click the running person, one of the things you're going to note is, and I'll make it bigger down here since we've got a lot of space, is that when I hit this running person, uh, it's going to prompt me to save my file. So notice this is really different from the REPL in that I could just immediately type in commands and I could immediately get feedback. But in this case, even though I wrote two commands, what's going to happen here is that it needs to save this file to operate. So I want to say sure. Uh, save this file. Uh, and the first thing I want to do is make sure that I'm in the right directory. Uh, so I'm going to save this file and I'm going to give it a name. By convention, most Python files have the .py. So I'm going to call this uh, hw.py for hello world. And note I give it the .py extension. And if I save this, I now will see in the left hand window over here that in this folder called PyLectures, I have one Python file. And that is the file that I'm currently editing over here. Um, so one of the things that's kind of cool is you'll note down here, you'll see a little tab that, or a button that works like a tab that shows the current file that I'm editing. One of the things you'll notice as we add more files, I'll be able to see and have open at one time multiple files to edit down here in tabs, much like you might have multiple windows open in a web browser. So that's a really nice feature. So let's see how this works. Um, if we look at this lower part of our IDE, this is going to be where our program output appears. So quick review. 
The left hand upper side is where we have the ability to see um, files on our file system. It's also where certain debugging information will appear. In the upper right hand side here we have the text editor. So this is where we'll be typing our programs. And in the lower box this is where we're going to see our program output and it's where if we want to provide our program with input we're going to see that input as well. So let me go ahead and run this and we'll see how it goes. And there we go. I ran this program and what happened was the integrated development environment took this file, passed it to the Python interpreter, and the Python interpreter then went ahead and executed the program. And instead of printing the output to the terminal output, uh, the terminal output was, I guess I'll say hijacked or redirected uh, from the running process back out to this JGRASP window. And that's where we see it. And one of the things you'll notice is that if I have an error and run it, Notice that in addition to seeing output, I'll also see any errors um, that are generated if I wrote my program incorrectly. So in this case, um, Python is space dependent. It needs things to be um, uh, spaced in a very structured fashion. And so since this uh, second line is indented one space over from the first line, it threw an error. And I got an error. So now I can go back here. Notice it said, hey, unexpected indent. This is one of those rare times where the, the error is actually helpful. Not all error messages are helpful. So I said, oh yeah, right. And notice that it says line two right here where the error is. And by having those line numbers on, it makes it really easy for me to see where line two is so I can go there and fix it. And now that it's fixed, I can run it again. One thing I'll recommend if you're working in JGRASP is notice how it, uh, the uh, previous output from different runs of your program is still there. I tend to like to clear regularly. There's nothing worse than getting confused because you're seeing previous output um, in a specific, uh, in that window from previous program runs. Just to demonstrate it one more time, if I choose and create another program, uh, Python program, I'll just put uh, another program here, the new print statement, and save it. Call it prog2. You'll note that I have the ability to have multiple programs open at one time. So these programs on the left that you're saving are the programs that you're going to submit for homework. Uh, and you'll be able to, um, you know, zip these directories up, make sure that you're naming things sensibly, and hand them in this way. And again, JGRASP is an IDE that's usually used for Java development for students. But it does allow us to write Python, and it's a really nice, easy way to get up and running, especially if you've never used the command line. Um, if anybody is curious how to write Java programs using the command line, that would be a great in-class discussion topic.